to me, it was a big feat because where I was at the time, and you know, I'm not a car builder. This is my first attempt at anything. The meaning behind it for me is more than anything else. It was all done for one guy, my, my late grandpa. My name is Justin Arias, and this is my 66 El Camino powered by an Arias LS Hemi. Arias Pistons was a company founded by my grandfather in 1969 in Gardena and he had a lot of experience in the racing industry prior to that. He founded Vinolia Pistons with his business partner named Bob Toros in 1953 or 4 after he got out of the Korean War. And the way that business turned out for him in the 50s and 60s as far as the Pistons go, he ended up working for Louis Center at Anson. He ended up buying the whole piston division from Louis Center from Anson and turning that and taking all the tooling and stuff and starting Arius in 69 on the corner of Normandy and 130 Fifth, and he worked there till the day he passed away in 2017. In 72, he introduced the Hemi cylinder head for the big block Chevy, and then later on, he came out with his own engines, the 10 liter, which is a total ground up design, very successful, unique engine, and then the 8.3 liter, the Arius V6, the four cylinder, and then in recent time, in 2008 or 9, I think it was introduced, was the Hemi cylinder head for the LS. And I grew up around all this stuff. Both sides of my family are really involved in the sport. And I grew up just hearing all these guys tell stories and just, they grew up in, an, in a time that I truly wish I was a part of. I wanted to make my own story and have something that I could do and have and uh, do with my grandpa, which to me was the most biggest goal of my life, really. I bought this El Camino in September 2014. I was 19 or 20, and it was just a nice stalker, and it was perfect. And ironically, I borrowed money from him to buy it, but I wanted to buy the car for him or have a project that we can start. I wanted to build a Hemi Chevy with him and have kind of like a house car, like an R&D project where we can build it, showcase it, promote it, show that it's reliable. I drove it for about seven months until I ripped the motor out, the trans out, and it sat for years. I ended up getting married. I had two sons. Needless to say, it sat a bunch for a long time. Unfortunately, my grandpa passed away the day after New Year's in 2017, and that was super hard on me. We were mid-project. The thing sat for a while, so you know I was starting to machine the motor and get some stuff done, and then he passed away, and I didn't even want to look at it. It sat on a property out in Beaumont, California for three years or something, I think. So I uh, became single <laughs> in the fall of 2019 again, and that's when it started. It was all in pieces and then I got it home and that was it. Like, it was kind of my therapy, if you will. I just, I had a mission and I set a deadline for his birthday, which was January 20th. And that was the latter part of 2019. And then I just started thrashing and I was sleeping like three, four hours at night. I got sick like every two weeks. My work was mad because I was calling out all the time. And I covered it with tarps and worked on it in the rain and it was pretty brutal. Every day I woke up, I remember laying in bed and thinking, what can I do today? So it got me out of bed. Otherwise, it would have been a lot harder if I didn't have this thing. So I got the motor built. I got it running in September of 2021. And it fired up and ran great. And then I had it on the dyno in October of last year. And uh, that was a pretty emotional day for me. The first time hearing it was pretty hard. It's still kind of hard to talk about sometimes, but <clears throat> the, the dyno went really well and it ended up making like 678 horsepower out of a little 406. You know, it's all for him, but it was it was cool to finally experience it firsthand and, you know, make those memories and stuff. And it was a really emotional day, but it was super healthy and I got it in the car about a few weeks after that. And then I knew there was no doubt that I would make the deadline and I wouldn't let anything stop me. I had dreams, man. I literally dreams. I would dream about it all the time going down Normandy with the tires on fire, banging second with him in the thing, and the Hemi Chevy's right there. I 
was up all night for weeks at a time, just thrashing on that thing. So I got it together. And then of this year in uh, January, his birthday was approaching, it's, it's on the 20th. And I drove it for the first time the day before on the 19th. It was so unreal. And I'm sitting in this thing and it's open header, there's no tags on it. And I just take it down the street and then I'm just sitting in this thing like, I'm in a Hemi Chevy right now. And it's working and like, it sounds insane and it hauls ass. And then the next day on his birthday, I drove it straight to the cemetery. It, I, I did it. I got it there. And, um, and that's something that I wanna make a point too about this car is like the story behind it. I did 100% of this in tribute to my grandpa. You know, I think about him all the time. You know, I missed the hell out of him. You know, it's kind of a bummer he didn't get to see it, but uh, I think he knew I was there that day. I was pretty damn loud. <laughs> Every year, you know, from here on out, as long as it's driving, every year on his birthday, I'll be going over there and hanging out with him, playing some jazz, and just sit down and hang out for a while. drag racing fan, 60s drag racing is my life. Other than my two sons, it's all I do, pictures and collecting and stuff like that. Growing up in the LA and South Bay area, and again, kind of going back to hearing a bunch of stories and growing up around a bunch of really well-known famous guys that I didn't even know who they were at the time. Now I look back and have a huge appreciation for guys around that area. And I try to stay loyal and true to those companies as far as the parts and stuff that I run on this thing. So I put a, you know, kind of a 60s twist on the thing. It's no gasser. The engine itself, you know, obviously is to me the most important thing about it. The engine is a 406 Hemi Chevy. The cylinder heads are designed to bolt onto an LQ9 LS. This engine in particular is a block made by World Products that from the outside looks like a small block Chevy. However, it has an LS deck height and an LS head bolt pattern. So that's what allows it to take the LS heads. It has Iski lifters. Ed Iskandarian is a, an amazing guy. The, all the guys out over there helped me out big time with putting this thing together with camshaft work and lifters and stuff like that. My friend Shane McMullen built the headers on the engine when that was the biggest worry since day one is how we're gonna get the primaries to fit in this thing because they are huge and the cylinder heads are really big. And an A body in general isn't the most ideal car to put this engine in it. I swear every other person that looked at it said, there's no way you can get the headers to fit or you know, they'll be too big or too tight or this or that. I'm like, yeah, you'll see. You'll see after Shane works on this thing. And he thrashed on that thing, put in about 40 hours for two and a half days straight. One of my favorite parts of the whole car is the scatter shield. It has an Anson scatter shield on it. And my grandfather was business partners with Louis Center from Anson. It has a Muncie M22 rock crusher because I remember I lived in Spokane throughout the last couple years of high school. And my mom's boyfriend at the time showed me two lane blacktop. And there's a few scenes in that movie where James Taylor is driving it and it's like an in cab shot. You can hear that whine of the trans and I heard that. I'm like, what is that? It has Lakewood ladder bars on it. It's got a 65 Chevelle 12 bolt and that tachometer on there was on one of my dad's dragsters. My brother and I kind of joke that that dragster is the reason why him and I exist because he met my mom when she was working for NHRA when he was racing that car at Pomona. And he had a spread, I think in National Dragster and he called the museum once and she picked up and he was talking to her and he said, oh, flip to this page. And you know, that's me in the magazine and whatever. In that photo shoot, you can see that tack on there 
It's got a Vertex mag that Tom Sorello built for me and him and his dad go way back doing magnetos for a lot of racing guys and top fuel guys as early as the 50s or 60s. Also on the magneto, I have a little diaper clip on both sides, but the one on the driver's side is this little clip with a duck on it. And that was on my dad's first dragster that he built when he was 19. The cigarette lighter in it was on my grandpa's 37 Chevy. It's got Craigers in the front and the rear wheels are Anson top eliminators. It has Raider pie crust slicks in the rear, I'm trying to stay true as I can. 66 GTO bucket seats, and the steering wheel came from a buddy of mine named Donnie Welch. You know, everybody is an American graffiti fan, and I was asking around, and I asked Donnie if he has a Kaviko from Milner's Coupe. And he's like, I have one. I'm like, of course you do. That was on an old race car that raced in California in the 60s. There's so many little things and stories about this car to me that I embrace and kind of thrive off of because like going back to what I was saying about how I grew up and coming from a family owned business background and stuff like that, it was cool to watch the success and evolution of something that started as an operation in my great grandparents garage in LA to this huge company that dominated the sport for a long time. And not limited to any other person that did it too. I'm a huge fan of any other competitor like such as Keith Black or Ed Pink or Dave Zuschel. And hearing stories and listening to them talk and reminisce on that stuff. We live in a different time and I just wanted to experience something as closely as I could to the real deal, which was just the deal back in the day. You know, it was just how they did it. But the way that it was done, looking back and hearing about it, you know, inspired me to kind of do it my own twist on it, I guess. I wish he could be here to see it because I, I could see his grin. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I just want to let you guys know that I just came out with some new four speed merch. If you want to support me, I'll link it down below and check it out. And please subscribe for more content.